Hi, everybody. It's episode 464 of PodQuest. Hey. hey. It is Tuesday, July 4th, 2023. I am Chris, with me is Druten. Hello. And Walnut. Yeah, I'm here. To Independence Day, guys. Will Smith is going to save us. America. <laughs> Do either of you happen to have the the president's speech from Independence Day memorized? The fuck no. No, no. But, like, I always want to do that. Like, I'm thinking of trying to cut together a short right now for YouTube to try to post it where it is the president's speech from Independence Day in the background, which is probably more than a minute long, so I don't know if I can do this, with me playing Sea of Thieves. Every time we end Sea of Thieves, we shoot off the fireworks we found. So I want to have the speech... With Sea of Thieves going. Okay. But I don't know if it's within a minute that I can actually do that. I mean, I could cut out silences, and then I'd have to find all of the videos that are possible of me playing Sea of Thieves and find just us shooting fireworks. It's a lot of work that I don't really know if I want to do, That's, because it might not come yeah. out. It might not be worth it. That does seem like a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I'm already working on a short for Monster Hunter that I'll talk to you guys about in a little bit. That's going to be a lot of work, so. Is it worth putting, like, a lot of work into a thing that can only be 60 seconds? Yes, actually. The shorts, uh, shorts, TikToks, reels, whatever, it is worth putting a lot of work in because people are more likely to watch those. I get, I get more exposure from those than I do from my long format video. I will tend to, like, when I was doing the stream highlights, where it would be, like, I would take a portion, like a match from Apex or a hunt in Monster Hunter or something and post that full thing on YouTube. It would take me, let's say, 20 minutes to edit, cut that, and and render it because all I'm doing is taking the video, talking about it at the beginning and the end, and posting it. But it would take me about an hour, hour and a half to actually edit it down from 30 minutes to a minute just finding the highlights. And that, I believe, gave me some decent exposure sometimes. Like... It wasn't always the best, but it's, the algorithms are weird. Like, I, I, I had a Final Fantasy short that, like, I did, most of my Final Fantasy shorts have had little work on them. Um, and it's just me fighting a monster and cutting out to, like, different highlights. I had one that blew up and got, like, 500 views. I had one that's at 70. And it's like, this doesn't make sense. It doesn't. No, that, yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's all a gamble. And that's why it's like, when I, when I'm thinking about the, the president's speech with Sea of Thieves, uh, uh, the cross section between fans of Independence Day and fans of Sea of Thieves, I think aren't very high. So I don't really understand if the, of the, if the Sea of Thieves people are going to understand what I'm doing. And I don't think, I, I'm not sure if the Independence Day fans are going to really understand what's going on. So it's like, is it worth it? Probably not. So I looked, that speech is over two minutes long. Yeah. So that, I don't even know if you could fit it into a minute without, like, butchering. I, I'd be able to put it into, like, a TikTok or a reel, because those can go over a minute. Mm -hmm. I think TikToks can go to, like, three to five minutes. But YouTube's shorts are set at a minute, so I would not be able to post it on YouTube without just turning it into a full-on video. Wait, I mean, you could do a, a TikTok, though, right? Can't those be longer than a minute? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could probably do a TikTok, but again, it's the cross section and and the work that's going to need to be put together for that. Like, it's not going to be a lot of work, but it's going to be a lot of me editing down the weight of the firework launching. Because like in Sea of Thieves, to fire off a firework, you have to load it into your cannon, point the cannon up into the sky, light the cannon, and then once the wick goes down, it shoots off and it goes out. So it's like there's a good like let's say twenty seconds per cat per fire firework before it actually goes off and so we'll set four the four of us will get into our cannons and light them all at the same time and wait or like have it like a small second delay and then watch them all go off but it's just it then then we'd have to have another minute to 30 seconds to a minute of setting more fireworks shooting them off again but just to to throw this out there i saw you say somewhere that you do not like fireworks i don't i don't like fireworks but yet you're going to make a video of virtual fireworks. What an asshole. I don't mind virtual fireworks. <laughs> I don't hate virtual fireworks. There are so many reasons why I do not like fireworks. Primary is they're boring. Um, as well as 
they fuck with the environment, they fuck with animals, and they fuck with dogs. Like, virtual fireworks don't do any of that shit. They're just pretty, and they can do different things. Like, you could shoot off a firework and see if he's in. It's a guy sword fighting another guy, and that's pretty cool. Nope, nope, that's not how fireworks work. Bad game. Well, Poor game no, that, see, that's the thing. That's more fun than bang. Oh, it's a bright light. Like, there was literally a time last night, I because uh, Haddon Township does their fireworks. Haddon Township and Audubon both do their fireworks. It's so weird that both of them do their fireworks on the 3rd. Because, like, where we sit for Haddon Township, you can also see the very tippy top of Audubon. Um, like, you can see some of their bursts as well. And it's like, it's, they, they do their fireworks on the 3rd. And there was a few times where it was just, I'm not epileptic. But there were some times that it was just the bright flashing, like, flashbangs going up. And they just did them constantly. I had to look away. Like, that was fucking with my eyes and fucking with, 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 with me. And, like... I just, I don't really care for them. There was not a single point in time where I was just like, this is very pretty. This is cool. And it's something over the past, like, maybe 10 years where I learned to be like, you know what? I don't like these. I think they're dumb. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty, uh, I am over how much people set off their own fireworks. Because, mm-hmm. like, we have people in our neighborhood that are setting them off while it's still fucking bright out. Yeah. And it's not even people that that live here. It's people going down to the lake and setting setting off air fireworks illegally in a public park yeah like the, the is, big ones are, it, are fine once in a while is it illegally i mean it is illegal to set off fireworks in a public park yes without a permit okay and i'm pretty sure new jersey's law is um ground or low fireworks only i don't know like i think if you go into like shop right right now they're selling them and yeah. like they're only selling like sparklers bottle rockets like things that don't go more than maybe a few feet in the air um, these people are setting off, like, the big ones that go, you know, 30, 40 feet in the air and explode. Yeah, yeah. Um, in a public yeah. park, 10 feet away from people's houses. Yeah. That was, um, because, so, we go to where the Seven Eleven used to be, right at the Yakme Shopping Center in Haddon Township. Okay. And, um, uh, so we park there and just watch them from, watch them at the school, and a bunch of people do that. And, uh... There was a guy there, and, like, I was helping my grandfather park his, his car so he could just stay in the car and sit there and watch. Um, and a guy, I was talking to somebody, and they're like, yeah, we're going to shoot off fireworks over there uh, throughout the night, too. I just wanted to let you guys know. And I wanted to be like, don't. But at the same, I'm like, what am I? I, I can't just say don't. You're, you're going to do what you want. I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. Sure. Like, I'm not, like, I can't say no, don't. I'm not the cops. I'm not the the authorities here. I don't own the area. I'm just here to watch fireworks. And he, they set off, like, two large, like, really loud bangers that, like, they, it sounded like they exploded when they went up, and then they exploded in the sky. And both times scared the shit out of me. Because I wasn't expecting it. I wasn't watching them. And I just, I fucking hate it. I hate it. Like, if you're going to, like like you said, set off, like, the ground ones that are just, like, like light flares going up that are, and that's it, great. But if you're going to, the boom, the boom, no, fuck you. That is just too much. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm also, yeah. I've been over fireworks for years at this point. I don't care. Yeah. They're like it, Like, the really big, like, well-done ones, like, like, that Disney does. Like, those are different, um, because they are, like, they put a lot of just production value into those. The ones that towns set off once a year, like, there's nothing really to them, it's just, it's ten minutes of, you know, one at a time, and then three minutes at the end of just everything they have left over shooting off at once. Mm -hmm. At least, like, when you go to, like, like, the amusement parks and stuff like that that do them, like, regularly, like... There's there's like themes to it. They they are shooting off things that like make different shapes and and images and there's usually like music or stuff playing behind it. Yeah. Even the the Phillies um we went to the game on um on Friday and they were doing fireworks after the game. Um but they actually did like a drone show before that. Mhm. Um I don't know if either of you have ever been there during like a fireworks night, but It's been a while, but yeah, I have. They make you clear um, basically the whole outfield and, um, like that center field area where it's like standing room only. So mm-hmm. if your tickets are outfield at all, or if 
if you had standing room tickets, you have to get out of that area. And they actually like rope it off and also people can't wander back there during the show because that's the fireworks go up um like kind of like where the flags are, like to the right of the scoreboard if you're looking from home plate. Yeah, um, I mean, it makes sense to move move people away. Plus, they wouldn't be able to see it. If they- exactly. I So we heard people bitching about it. Um, They're like, we have these seats and we can't sit in them for the fireworks. I'm like, what fucking fireworks are you going to see? They're fucking behind you, you fucking idiot. Yeah. Um, But we weren't we didn't stick around for, for the fireworks because like by the time the game ended, it's like it's going to take them 45 minutes just to clear people out before they came and start the fireworks. Mm-hmm. And then it it was a it was a almost full stadium. It was like 44,000 people. Um. So I'm like, it's going to be a nightmare to get out of here, too. So let's just head to the car, and if we see them, we see them. Um, and they still hadn't started by the time we got home, like, half an hour later. But they did do, like, a drone show, like, in that open area, like, that you can see, like, the like outside of the stadium through. And that was cool. Like, they, it started out as just, like, the Phillies P, and then it, um, it separated and, like, reorganized to look like the Fanatics head. Yeah. Uh, I think at one point they did Bradledge... Um... Uh, uh, on the ground of the mound when they won in 08. Oh, did you see, like, pictures or something from it? Yeah, I saw a picture from it. Um, And it was like, that was one of the things that they did, or one of the silhouettes that they had was, like, a player, and is like, down on the ground, arms up, on his knees, like, head up high, and that was Lidge when he threw the final pitch in the World Series in, in 08 after the uh, three-day-long game. <laughs> um. It was, it was three days long. Yeah, because didn't it get rain delayed or something? Yeah, mm-hmm. it, got, it was at least two days long. But yeah, it got, uh, I think it was the sixth inning. It got delayed because of rain, and it that rain lasted for at least a day, if not two. It was, I think it was the longest, ta- I think it's considered the longest World Series game of all time. Oh, that's actually kind of fun. But, uh, but yeah, like, the, the drone show was neat. Like, I would have liked to see that over the, um, the fireworks, because you can at least do cool stuff with those. Yeah. Make them change colors, re, like, reorganize themselves. Yeah. Um, but Rich, before we started, uh, actually recording, you were talking about something, and I actually forget what it is now. Uh, so I, um, this is a little bit spoilers for my Saturday episode. So we're recording on the 4th. I believe you already said that. Yeah. We're recording on the 4th. Uh, so my Saturday, the 8th episode. Uh, of, um, uh, Fallout 4 has my first Let's Play player character. T- well, technically second, but I didn't, I don't count the first because it was within literally five minutes of me playing. And I'm like, this doesn't count. And I even said that on the, on air. I'm like, all right, yeah, that, that doesn't count because I, this is permadeath series and I literally, I just started. So we'll just keep going. I should have taken that death out, but I thought it was funny. Um, but it has my uh, first, what I'm calling my first official death in a game. And I don't know if I want to stick with the permadeath. Um, because what happened was I was going into, uh, this is in Fallout 4, I was going into the satellite array, or the satellite um, USMC satellite uh, thing it, there. Y'all might know what I'm talking about if you've played Fallout 4. Uh, and there were a few enemies that, like, I was kind of trying to sneak around trying to figure out what to go, where to go. Uh, dog didn't come down with me, so the game was kind of glitching a bit. Um, and I pull out my shotgun to, to, like, turn the corner and check, and I go to shoot at an enemy, and somehow don't hit him when I'm point blank with a shotgun. Twice. Where then I get hit, like, six times, I get infected, I get... I break an arm and this and that. So I run away. I use my stim packs to heal, but in survival mode, they don't heal you immediately. It heals you over time. Um, so then I switch my weapon. I grab a Molotov and I go to throw it through a window, but apparently it clipped into a pillar right next to me. And this is all on the episode. It'll be all on the episode. It clipped on a pillar next to me and blows up. Oh, that's nice. And, that's yeah. So, a quick question, just, I've never really played Fallout. If I remember correctly, um, combat in that is, like, like random, right? Like, just because you look like you're actually aiming at somebody, there's still, like, a an invisible dice roll on whether you hit them? Uh, 50, it's, it's less so of, in four. Yeah, like, so, if you are using vats, yes, it is. It gives you a percentage chance of hitting and everything else. But if you are using your own skill to shoot, you are more likely to hit the target than not if you are aiming at them. Okay. 
Yeah. So it's like if you're using Vats, okay, I because that's like it, more, um... it, that's the slowdown time and that is the precision attacking. You deal more damage when you're using Vats, but it raises the runs the risk of you not hitting all uh not so apparently my internet's very iffy this morning. I just saw you go yellow while well, well, right before you said that. Um, did, did we lose Cobb? He just texted in the group. He said, like, apparently, Zen- yeah, yeah, he, he lost. Oh. But he said to keep going. But we had stopped. So I'm I don't back. know. Are you Can you guys hear me? Oh. <laughs> we lost him again. Now he's really gone. Um, did I already edit that episode? And do I have a less less editing than you do? I did edit that episode. Hey, I there you I go. Did. That's good. I thought, I thought, you know what? I edited it, and then I had, I, I didn't have time to actually upload it. That, you know, that's what it was. So I only have two things to edit then, and one thing to record it. But, yeah, so, like, the, because I remembered putting in, so when I die, I put in a white flash. Instead, of, like, a, a lot of my cuts are either hard cuts or, like, crossfades, um, or if it's like a longer cut, like what I'm considering, like a, a scene by scene, like an actual scene or chapter cut of the episode, it'll be like a fade to black, come out from black kind of kind of fade. So this way, it's like, all right, this is the next main part of the episode. Mm-hmm. Um, this time when I died, I did a fade to white. So I whited out the screen, like as if I went to to the to the good place, and then faded back in, and it opens up, and I'm just like, well, that was a weird dream. I guess we got to go do all that all over again. And I go and I reset the, the, the episode and I like, I'm, I talk about it in the episode. I'm like, do you guys watch this for the permadeath or do you watch this? Just watch somebody play, uh, Fallout 4. I'm going to complete this quest and I'm going to head home and we're going to call it an episode. But you guys let me know and I'll probably record another episode before then. Or I, we might have one more episode as this character. And if you guys want me to call it after that death, I'll call it. But at least I was able to finish the quest. Uh, but yeah, it's just, I, I don't want to, because Fallout 4 is so big and there's so much to do, it, I don't 100% want to call the quest, or call the quest line, or call the character at, at episode 3. I would feel a lot more accomplished if it was like 10 to 15 episodes in, and be like, alright, this is, this, this happened, and I died, and like, I, I actually did stuff, like, but at the same time, I've been trying to figure out different ideas of what to do with different characters in Fallout, and so I can just go into a new character build and everything else and try a different pathway like this one i was kind of going sort of sort of kind of gonna go the minutemen storyline and do a lot of the minutemen stuff Uh um but the next one i i could probably figure out and my character was more a scavenger and like i made it so that like he had high perception and he was able to like uh like find things easier and uh, he was like a wasteland survivor, but maybe my next character can be more based on intelligence and is like a smarty pants and maybe high cur- no, he's gonna be a nerd. He's gonna have low charisma. Um, and maybe be able, be like, uh, mecha- like I need to actually figure out more about the game and remember more about Fallout 4 because it's been a while since I played it, at least two years. And I've never actually fully beaten the game. Um, so I need to figure all that out before I actually, um, I, I need to remember more about the game so I can figure out what kind of playthrough I want to do. I would say, since you started that one as permadeath, you should just axe that character. Yeah. But then, by all means, start a new one that's not permadeath. Yeah, but... I could do that. That or I could just hide the deaths if there are, like, stupid deaths at least. If there's, like, a legitimate death... I'll keep it, but if there's a stupid death, like I accidentally throw a grenade and it blows me up instead because of Bethesda Fallout clipping and 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 shit like that, I can just hide that. But where's the fun in that? Yeah, true. I'm with Bob on that. Like, I don't know. That's kind of that game. Yeah. the The other uh, thing about it is, um, since I'm playing on survival mode, there's no auto save. So when I died. I, I I had played for 45 minutes. When I died, I went back to when I loaded in the game. So I had to redo everything I had already done. Which, oh, so survival mode isn't isn't permadeath. It's just harder. It's so survival mode has uh, water and food tracking. Um, I believe we modded it so that I can fast travel. I think it initially didn't have fast travel. I can't 100% remember. Uh, but there's water and food tracking. 
Um, and so you need to make sure you eat. There's uh, sleep tracking, so if you don't sleep, you actually lose stamina. Um, in basic Fallout 4 survival, you can only save when you're sleeping. We edited that so that, like, I can save if I'm just, if the session's over, basically. If I played for an hour and the day's not done, I can save. Um, because we, it is lightly modded. We added a few mods into it to, for, like, quality of life, graphical issues. Um, there's actually, in my second episode, there's a montage of me at the end after I sign off of me cleaning up my base and turning it into, like, kind of what I want it to look like. And I destroy the whole base at least three times. Because one of the mods that I have are is break down everything. So in the base building, you can literally break down stuff that the game doesn't even let you break down. Which is, uh, sure you may know this more than cop, like the red rocket gas station right at the beginning of the game. Mm -hmm. You can break down that whole gas station, which if you're playing the game normally, you can't. And so, like, I broke, I, there was one point I broke down the whole gas station and all you see are the vines that were all hanging around it and everything else. I'm like, fuck! And I had to re reload right before that to to be able to do that. Yeah, I didn't know you could break things down. So yeah, there's there's a full on base building uh, thing in Fallout. Oh, uh, I did. Then, I do remember the base building. I didn't know you yeah. could like break other things down though. I thought you just had to find stuff to put in your bases. Oh yeah, no, no, that was huge. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it was down shit it, in Fallout. Four. Yeah, I played was, like two hours and did not have any fun, and that was yeah. My experience with Fallout. I love Fallout yeah. 4. I'm waiting for the next Fallout. gen patch, and I'll replay it on PS5. Yeah, Fallout 4 is great. It is great. Um, it's it's a it's, it's a much better game. Like I I wouldn't say it's much better than Fallout 3. I think it 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 stands the line of Fallout 3. Like it is as good as Fallout 3 was, and Fallout 3 is very good. I've never played New Vegas, so I can't really say comment. I know. Player people love New Vegas, and I've never been able to play it. I've never gotten into it, so I can't like comment on how much better or worse four is to New Vegas. But like, it's like two dollars on Steam. I know. I honestly, I don't really have an interest in playing it. It's hard. I don't like going back to older games a lot of times. Like older so versions. The guy who of, played all no, of Resident Evil. C correction: older versions of Resident Evil is a different story because those are games that I've played my entire life. But like. When when it comes to like playing, like I can't go back to the older older Monster Hunters pre Monster Hunter World. I can't go back. I tried it and I hated it. Um, going back to Fallout Three, I might be able to do because it's mostly the same. But like, I don't have the nostalgia for Fallout New Vegas because I never played it as a kid. So I'm probably not gonna look at it like, oh my god, this is so great because there's nothing in it for me. like. I have the nostalgia for Fallout 3. I don't have the nostalgia for Fallout New Vegas kind of thing. Like, it's it's like it's a nostalgia thing when it comes to games that some of the older games. Yeah, I mean, I I do understand that at least to an extent. Like the it's, um, it's like it's like, Super, back, Mario it's yeah, like, like Super Mario World. It's like Super Mario World. I hate Super Mario World. But you don't because, like platformers because you're I boring. Don't, I don't like platformers. I'm not big on retro games, but there are some retro games that I love playing, like um, Wrecking Crew. That was part of my childhood, but Super Mario World was not part of my childhood, and so when I think about going back and playing that, I just uh, I shudder. I yeah, don't going I don't back like and playing it. a perfect game. Just seriously. <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> he played fucking shit ass Mega Man X games. He did Look, hate most of those, at least. I, I at, after <laughs> after Mega Man X five, those games were garbage, and I did not complete a single one after X five. Or no, did I complete X seven? I think I completed seven. I thought seven was the one that you dropped. Maybe it was eight. No, no, no. Six, six, I dropped near the end. Seven, I think I was able to beat somehow, and then eight, I dropped within two levels. Yeah, that's what it was. I think I beat seven. I'm pretty sure I beat seven. Um, but yeah, after X five, X five was the best Mega Man X game. And uh, but yeah, it, after after X five, X six, X seven, and X eight were just so bad and i couldn't beat them i couldn't make my way through them i um had too many games what was that two weeks ago um yeah the, I, I saw a couple carts for like mid number Mega Man x's i'm just like oh man i should buy those but they were all more expensive than i was willing to spend yeah um so one was in box wait which one what was it 
uh one of i forget which numbered game it was but it was one of the snes ones and it was still it it oh, in box i don't know it wasn't sealed um and i don't so i don't know if it was complete in box but it it still at least had the original packaging mm-hmm. um so drew you're saying i should stick with the permadeath for this character and call it uh, yeah i mean if you started it and did multiple episodes already like kill that character start right. start anew and you know if you don't want to do permadeath don't do permadeath like i totally get it i but that's the thing i want to do the permadeath i just i feel like three episodes isn't long enough like i, f- I feel very lame like going into season two or a new story beats it's it's also the game pushes you to do if you're doing because i have the alternate start mod where you can pick, like, oh, I was a this, I was doing that. Like, you can pick things and start not at the vault, not as the dad. Um, and so, like, but the, the, the first quest it gives you is Rumor of a Vault, where it pushes you to go to the vault, pushes you to go do Sanctuary, pushes you to go do uh, Conquered. You don't have to do those. But, like, that is, that, that like, helps you get things on the map and, and, and directs you in certain places. So I would then, the first episode for me would just be, Walking around trying to find somewhere to live, uh, and finding quest lines to run, plus the areas I could be in are higher level than in level I'm at. So, like, I'd have to think about stuff like that and figure out, like, alright, where can I start this time? Um, first episode, if I die, it's, I, it still counts as, it, it doesn't count as a death because I, I'm still restarting from nothing. Uh, but yeah, like, I'll, I'll, I think I'll probably go re-edit the episode and cut out any after the death and just have it end with the fade to white so out of curiosity this is not directly fallout related did you also die in your longest dark is that why you're going to fallout or are you just running no. two different survival games uh, somebody doesn't pay attention to my youtube or my discord i'm nope. run three i'm running three games i'm doing i'm still doing long dark that comes out uh every wednesday it came out yesterday because i wasn't streaming yesterday for this week but I'm still running the long dark that uh, just hit. Um, I just recorded in it, uh, episode 20 last night. Or last Aren't you week. doing that as a like I, I, I vaguely remember you saying you were doing that as like a, a permadeath too, right? Like once you I'll, die, I'll, you're dead. So uh, long dark, seven days to die are both definitely strictly permadeath. Um, long dark is I, I'm calling that my survival series because when I'm done long dark, I'm going to jump into a different survival based game, probably going to be stranded deep because that game is chaos and stupid and fun um and that's going that could potentially be another three episode um three episode game because like i showed you guys a video i think of me like i was rowing and a shark hit my boat toppled it over and it wouldn't let me get out of my boat so i just died by drowning um i was also definitely thinking of seven days to die not the long dark um well seven days to die is also uh, a series I'm running that comes out on Fridays, and that is, um, right now I'm doing, it's called Vanilla, and it's just basic seven days to die alpha 21 rule set. Like, whatever the game sets you up as the rules. I'm probably gonna mess with one or two, like maybe make the zombies harder, or, um, at least increase the zombie count during the Horde Nights. I haven't had a first Horde Night yet, so increase the zombie spawn rate of Horde Nights. That's probably the only thing I'm really gonna change. But it is vanilla rule set, vanilla, just play the game until you die. Uh, and it's basically to learn and explore seven day, uh, Alpha 21 and, and the new Alpha. Um, and then after that, once I die in vanilla, I'm going to change to like the other storylines. I have one where it's, I, I just want to call it MacGyver, where I have to, I don't know if I want to call it MacGyver, because I have another story where it's MacGyver, where I have to use explosives only. But I have one where it's like I have to craft everything I use. Ammo, weapons, armor, everything. Which this new alpha has actually made it harder, but more needed to do crafting. So, like, it's going to be a lot more fun. I've been That's something I've been wanting to run since Alpha 20, was a crafting-only run. Where if, if I find a level 6 shotgun, I need to scrap it or sell it. And I can't use it. I have to stick with my little level 1 shotgun that I built. Um, but that seems, yeah, that seems rough. It, it, it very well can be like the, I, I actually recorded one episode of that, uh, once and, um, 
one. I I recorded one episode and then couldn't find the file path that that the recording went to for some reason. So I never actually edited it. I actually recorded that like three times, and every time I like the one time I edited it, uh, 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 audio syncing went off somehow, and I don't know what I did. So I just scrapped that one. The second time I couldn't find the video files or the audio files, one of them, and then. Um, maybe there might have been a third recording. No, I was doing just that as a normal playthrough by myself to see how it would go. And I was finally able to build a pistol, a level one regular pistol, which took me like 10 days. And you can hit, I believe it's G in, in that game. And it will drop whatever you have in your hands. And I was on the second floor of a building in a city. And I accidentally hit G with my pistol out, and he throws it to the ground. I spend an hour looking for this gun, and I cannot find it. I'm like, well, I'm, I'm fucking done. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. It took me ten days to make a pistol, and I lost it. Because it's in seven days to die, um, the way they do their crafting for like things higher than the Stone Age, basically, is you need the parts of the weapon you're trying to make. So if you're trying to make a pistol, you need pistol parts. And the higher the level of pistols you can make, the more of the parts you need. So if you're trying to make a level 5 pistol, let's say you need 10 pistol parts. It took me 10 days to find 5 pistol parts for a level 1 pistol. And wow. then I lost it. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's hard. But the new alpha has changed it to where, uh, based on what your level ups are, you, you're more likely to find the parts of the items that you're, you're, gear, you're, you're uh, specced for. However... They also changed it by, you don't learn the different tier level of a weapon by increasing your skill level in that weapon. You learn it by finding books. And so, say there's a hundred pistol books in the game. Every five increases the level of pistol that you can make starting at the pipe pistol. So every five you go from pipe pistol one to pipe pistol two to pipe pistol three up until pipe pistol six. And then after Pipe Pistol 6, it goes to regular pistol, like handgun 1, handgun 2, handgun 3. And then, uh, uh, not Uzi, um, I can't remember, uh, what the, what the, what the next one was. But like, that's how it goes this time. So it's like, it's even harder now to get those higher things, which I'm like, I'm excited to do that crafting only series. Yeah, that, I mean, that one actually sounds like it could be at least more entertaining. Yeah. Uh, um, and, and the the Fallout, I will say Fallout and Seven Days to Die are a lot more entertaining than, than The Long Dark. Because The Long Dark is a lot of nothing. And I've been trying to make it more exciting. But it, it it's the, the nature of the game is just survive. So I've somehow survived 30 days, which is the longest I've ever survived in it. Which is funny when it's like, I remember when you initially started it, it was just, you, you I think you, I believe you said it was just until you die. And then, you, yeah. like like, you launched it that way. And now it just keeps going. Yeah, I, I mean, I've had I've had playthroughs of Seven Days of Die that didn't last an hour, or not Seven Days of Die of the Long Dark that didn't last an hour. Like I I had at le- I did um this is a while back I was doing a bonus stream one night and I was doing the Long Dark the Long Darkathon. We play until we die, and I load up and I say hi, jump into the game. Stream should have ended forty five minutes in. But everyone who was there was like, nah, go again. You need to at least survive a day before before you call it. And then I load in, and I found a location where I I reached an equilibrium of, I don't have to go anywhere, and I'm going to survive for the rest of my life here. So we're good. I don't need to I don't need to leave anymore. Uh, and I ended it after like three and a half hours. Yeah, that I mean, three and a half hours seems a little more reasonable. Yeah. Uh, but I'll probably, I'm going to talk to one other person about um, Fallout and see what they think, and maybe figure out a new storyline for Fallout. And I'll probably, the next episode I record might be a new character, and I'll probably re-edit the episode to fade to white when I die. I won't even sign off. It'll just go to my credits, Um, because that's just funny, funnier that way. Uh, But let's move on to other stuff, because there's definitely other stuff we can talk about. There is, Um, and we also skipped before. Rich, what's on the agenda? Uh, On the agenda, uh, Cobb, I guess you're reading the manga for Dragon Ball? I am. Um, I finally defeated Primordial Malzino, uh, and we all watched Renfield. And, uh, Cobb, you watched Evil Dead Rise. Is that a movie, or is that a series? Is that the series? It's a movie. It's a movie, okay. Yeah, it's, it's a new it's one, the new though, one right? that just came out. Yeah. Good. 
Good. Um, yes. Yeah, so I rearranged a little bit just here because you you were. I figured you didn't want to go for an hour and a half just talking at us about things that Drew uh-huh. and I are not familiar with. <laughs> <laughs> You um, could be familiar with my YouTube series. These guys are only a half hour long each. Dude, I don't even watch YouTube like for stuff that's like actually up my alley. Well, time to start watching YouTube. I don't like it. I'd rather watch shit on YouTube. Than- <laughs> I'm the All right, I, book club. I'd rather watch a movie. Book club. <laughs> YouTube stuff. My long dark... Se- no, that would be freaking... What are we at? What did I say? 20 episodes? That would be 10 hours long. Yeah, that's too much. that's too much of a game that like I have zero interest in. Yeah, I mean that's that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I wouldn't force anybody to watch my Long Dark. But if you're interested in Long Dark, watch it. If you're not interested in Long Dark, maybe just watch the most recent episodes. I completely understand why people enjoy watching those sorts of videos, though. Um, mm-hmm. Like watching people play like survival games, like I get that. It's just not being into those games that the the actual enjoyment drastically decreases. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Same. But but yeah. So I started reading Dragon Ball. Uh, just a couple days ago. Nice. Um, I read half of it already. Is it, uh... Well, Dragon Ball wasn't a long-running series like Z-Ball. So, so, I mean, Dragon it's, Ball, I think they it's packed a hun- out about 150 episodes? So, episodes, yeah. So, it was 150 episodes of Dragon Ball and then 291 episodes of Z. But also, yeah. remember, original Z, lots of filler. Yeah, yeah. Like, Home for Infinite Losers, filler. Um, Garlic Jr. between, um, Frieza and Cell. 100% filler. Plus there's just like all the um the extended stuff like that final Frieza fight taking like 30 episodes. Uh, yeah. when they redid it in Kai, I think it's 10 episodes or something like that. Yeah. They basic they w- like original Kai was just um Saiyan through Cell um and it was 99 episodes. Then they they several years later they did the Boo saga and they just pushed all the filler back into that that part of it so that's another like 100 episodes almost i Hmm. think it's like 68 or 69 episodes for just the boo saga jesus um yeah but uh yeah original dragon ball the manga is 194 chapters and i think dragon ball z is like 300 chapters 200 chapters something like that it's weird because kind of like um so like with naruto like the naruto manga is just it's the whole thing so it's, it's from him becoming a ninja to the end of the war just like that whole stretch it's like 700 chapters um Mm -hmm. the show split into two different series though you had naruto and then the time skip happened and they they renamed it to shippuden um dragon ball did something similar where the dragon ball manga never stopped it just kept going and just there was a three-year time skip or, or however long that was and that is where the story of z starts at chapter 195 um but then, like, the, the show renamed itself to Dragon Ball Z. In America, they did split the manga, too. So if you're looking at, like, the ch- the chapter numbering on anything, it can get really confusing. Because Japan and basically every other country, the numbering just kept going. America, they released Dragon Ball Z as its own separate manga series. Oh, uh, so they pulled a Marvel Comics. Yeah. Yeah, kind of. Okay. Um, and I believe actually Dragon Ball Z was re- I mean, the anime definitely, but I think the manga was also released here first. Mm-hmm. So like we got Z manga before we ever got Dragon Ball manga, which is probably part of the reason why they they split it like that. Yeah, I mean that makes sense. Um, but so I know Dragon Ball, like the the story of Dragon Ball, but I've never just watched the whole thing all the way through, like in one it, like not in one sitting, but like on. On purpose, I guess you could say. Like, I've, I've only ever seen, like, I've seen chunks of it through through the whole series, like, over the span of, like, 15 years. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't really want to watch it because 150 episodes is a lot to watch. But, like, they're, like, 15-page chapters. So it's it's incredibly easy to just, like, burn through the manga. And yeah. uh, other than some really just poorly aged stuff that, frankly, like... I feel like it wouldn't have been great back in 1984, but like it's even worse now. Um, it's a it's a charming little book. Um, like there's a that Drew. I'm sure you've never watched Dragon Ball, right? Not original. I can't say but, that I've seen any of it. And Rich, have you? I've seen a few episodes because uh, they it wasn't they didn't release it in the states until after Z was over. 
So um, it was it was weird. They started airing it on Toonami, I think, around the Boo Saga, so like two thousand two ish. Um, and it was it aired like the time slot after Z. So like yeah. you're watching like the Boo Saga at, at like five, and then at five thirty, Dragon Ball was on. Yeah, yeah, and so like I've seen a few episodes here or there, but I, I I've never really like been a, I've never really sat down to watch it all. Okay, so it's. Dragon Ball is the weird transition for Toriyama from over-the-top gag manga, which was what his previous successful series was, Dr. Slump, into the more, like, shonen tropes and stuff like that that you see in most other shonen anime and manga. So, like, early Dragon Ball, like, there's just a lot of goofy stuff. Like, when Bulma, Bulma is looking for the Dragon Balls and she finds Goku in the woods, um, the first thing she does is she runs him over with her car... And then when he gets back up, she thinks he's a monster, and she begins shooting him with an automatic rifle. Mm -hmm. And he is fine after that, Um, because Goku is bulletproof. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And, like, there's a point where um, a man hits Goku in the head with an axe, and he's fine. Um, there, there's an early bit where they, um, they go to a village that is being run by an evil rabbit who can turn people into carrots when they touch him. Um... And after Goku beats him, he takes the, the, the rabbit and his henchmen and just leaves them on the moon. Mm-hmm. Like, he, he uses his power pole, and he has it extend all the way to the moon and leaves them there. And when he gets back, they're just like, well, where'd you take him? He's like, oh, I left him on the moon. Because um, apparently there's, like, a Japanese fable about, like, a rabbit on the moon making mochi or something like that. Okay. Um, but, like, if you know the series, you know, like... 50 chapters later, the moon gets destroyed. So Goku Goku committed manslaughter. I, he, not on purpose. He didn't <laughs> purposely do that. I, mean, I guess Roshi I, did I, then? Yeah, I, Roshi. If Roshi was the one who destroyed the moon, then he knows what happened. He knows what he was doing. But like, I, I remember hearing that uh, in Dragon Ball, there's a scene where. I, I don't know how true this is. It probably is true because it's Japanese anime in the 80s. Where Goku is trying to fall asleep, and he he goes to lay on Bulma's lap, and it's soft and comfortable, and, like, he apparently takes off her panties and sees what she has underneath. And then at one point, Roshi is being a creepy old man, and is like, well, I'll do it if you show me your panties, and she does, but he's, they're off. Yes, and so, so it's just, she that, flashes him, basically. That, that is the parts I was saying did not age well and would not have been good back then either, but, like... Looking at it through like a modern lens, especially like a non like Japanese lens, where I feel I feel like that stuff in anime and manga is just way more like common over there than what you would get in like things aimed at a younger demographic here. Mm-hmm. Um, like kids shows have always like kids shows in America have always had that like there's like subtle adult humor. Like it's nothing that a kid is going to realize, but like the it makes the adults chuckle when they're forced to watch it with their kids. Mm-hmm. And then you have stuff like this, which is just straight up, like, sexual harassment. Um, so the whole thing in the beginning of the series is Goku has only ever known one other human, and that's his grandpa, Gohan. Yeah. He, doesn't know, he, he doesn't know what the difference between boys and girls are at all. So there's, like, a running, like, and with air quotes, gag, that every time he meets a new person, he goes up and pats them on the crotch to see if they're a boy or a girl. Because he, he doesn't, he can't tell the difference just looking at them. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, so early on, he curls up on Bulma's lap to sleep because that's how he used to sleep with his grandfather. Um, but, it, but he's confused because there's nothing there like he has. Um, and yeah, so while she's like passed out, he does take her underwear off to ca- try and figure out what's going on. For him, it's just an innocent, like, he doesn't understand act. Um, and he's early in Dragon Ball, he says he's like 13 or 14. Um, but then later on, you find out that he's really like 11. He just doesn't know how to count. Um, he didn't learn how to count until, like, halfway through the series when Master Roshi taught him. So he didn't know that, like, 12 and 13 came after 11. <laughs> um, but he does that, sh- and somehow Bulma just never notices. Um, so that when they do end up finding um, Roshi and they're trying to get... Um, he has a Dragon Ball at the time. And this is actually your first time seeing Roshi. Um, she thinks she's just flashing her underwear, but she's actually just flashing him. Um and that is stuff like that happens a ton in the first like 20 chapters like roshi just being gross and gross um at the point where like krillin shows up and they start training 
Roshi still makes like the shitty comments that you remember from Dragon Ball Z and like watches like the aerobics instructors and all, but he's less offensive than he was in those first 20 chapters. Yeah. Um, but between all of that, all of that stuff, there, there is like legitimately like funny and like some, sometimes wholesome things. Like, uh, the first like real villain of the series, and at least in my opinion, would be Pilaf. Um, there's a bunch of like one offs, like technically Oolong is a villain and he is also shitty like Roshi. Um, Yamcha was a villain, but Yamcha's a bitch. Um, but Pilaf is like the first like guy with a castle that captures them and like they're in bad shape for them. Yeah. And like he actually he yells at Mai for making like a poop joke. Um, he's like, "We're better than this. We're not making poop jokes to sell our manga." <laughs> like it, he's just he's very wholesome for like a villain. He even his torture technique is blowing a kiss at Bulma. Hmm. Um. So so yeah so like. A lot, a lot of weird stuff early on, but like once it kind of gets into the training and the tournament, and now I'm closing in on the end of the Red Ribbon Army stuff. It's become more of that like Dragon Ball, like Goku traveling around and just fighting people. Um, there's occasional like like dumb gags, but it's not the overly sexual stuff as much anymore. Um, like I said, when Roshi's around, it's there's always a possibility, but he's not in it much anymore, which is kind of refreshing. Yeah. Um, but it, it is just funny to see how goofy some of this stuff is, knowing where it gets to in Z. And not, ha- like, I don't remember this stuff that well. Like, I remember um, just bits and pieces. Like, the tournament I remember really well. The, um, the the early parts of the Red Ribbon Army. Parts of, like, the King Piccolo stuff. But, like, I don't remember, like, explicit details. And just mm-hmm. seeing some of, like, the stupid ways that, like, Goku, like, fights people and ends things like he fights a big monster once and he he can't hit him because they're like squishy so he he blows a hole in the wall and um and lets them freeze to death basically because it's really cold outside that's weird yeah yeah just really really dumb stuff like that but it's fun i've been enjoying it um i think the after red ribbon army should be the piccolo arc which i think is where um tian and chaltu get get introduced in like that first arc i think it's like Mm -hmm. they get introduced and then it becomes like the actual piccolo arc but uh yeah it's, it's been fun so far i'm enjoying it nice. i'll probably have it i will probably if i keep reading it the way i have been because they are such short chapters i'll probably be done that by next week but, nice yeah yeah it's been fun so rich um you beat a monster yes not only did i beat a monster but this is the first time i've ever completed every monster and completed a monster hunter game in the series which is, like, it's a major accomplishment for me. So, I've been playing Monster Hunter since Monster Hunter 3 on the... Well, actually, I've been playing it since Freedom Unite, but I didn't really get too much into Freedom Unite. And even in 3 and 4, like, I was just playing with people I wasn't actually playing to play. And I enjoyed it back then, but, like, I didn't really get start to get into the nitty-gritty, really, of the series up in, until, like, maybe, like, Generations. And then when World came out, that's when I, like, was like, super hardcore, like, further into it, but in all of these times, I've never, most of the time, I never even made it much into G rank, which is, like, or, or high, uh, master rank in, in the newer games. Um, I just, I would just play with my friends whenever we would get together and play, and they would set me up with an armor set, and we would go through the games, and I would have fun playing with it, and I'd, I'd play it on my own, but, like, there were, like, there was a an armor set I was trying to get in one of the earlier games, it might, might have been Monster Hunter 4, that, like, I had to fight the same monster, and I fought him 30 times, and I still didn't get the item I needed. And it was just, like, that was all I was doing for, like, three days straight. And it sucked. And so, like, I, I kind of stopped playing that game at that point. Because, like, that armor set was what I needed to, like, be do what I wanted to do. But then uh, World came out, and then it came out cross-platform, but it wasn't cross-play, so everyone I played it on the PlayStation with eventually got it for the PC and stopped playing with me, and I don't play with randos that well. So I, I stopped playing it. Same with Iceborne. And then Rise came out, and I finally got it for PC, and I stuck with it. And I defeated the final monster, which was Primordial Malzino, which to somebody who doesn't really play these games to you guys, this doesn't really mean much, I'm sure. But for me, it doesn't this mean is anything like, at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but like, if there's a, if there's a, a, a game that like, a, 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 
like a puzzle that it took you a few days to figure out or whatever in a game that like you've never actually fully been able to complete or something it's it is an achievement of mine because it's this is my first official full completion of a monster hunter game um this monster himself took the 12 tries and over five hours to defeat him he killed me he, he 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 I failed the mission eleven times before I was able to beat him. And let me tell you, this fight was one of the most fun fights that they introduced in Rise. Like there was a lot of good fights in Rise, there was a lot of bad fights in Rise. Uh but this guy, like, you actually have to be very tactical, you have to be very thought like like thoughtful when fighting him because he hits hard and he hits heavy. And my first eleven tries I just was like kind of going at it. I was learning him, but it was getting frustrating as all hell. Uh, there was one point, uh, uh, one of the, 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 my 11th try that my controller died. And so I had to just exit out. I was like, well, this fucking sucks. And I tried, like, I, I died after my controller died. I plugged in my controller into my PC to charge it, but I had to like play sideways because of the, how much range my, my, uh, my USB cable had to be able to plug it in. And after that, I was like, all right, well, I'm done with this. I'm done. I can't. I'm frustrated. I'm angry. Like, it's all stupid deaths. Like, I know what, what I'm doing wrong. But it was just, it was on uh, Sunday stream. I started up late, and first thing I did was I didn't warm up. I didn't do anything. And I just go after Primordial Malzino. And the the Primordial Barbarian war cry that I let out when I beat him. <laughs> like. I, 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 I'm not even kidding. I was so excited. And the fact that you don't even kill him, you repel him. So it's some of the bigger monsters that you fight in the Monster Hunter games, uh, like the, the elders, you don't actually, you don't always kill them. It's just the, the, it's a siege mission and it's just repel them, move, send them away, send them back to where they came from. And then, the, and it happens throughout many of the Monster Hunter series. This, I think this is, uh, maybe the first game that only had it happen once. Maybe World didn't have it at all. Um, but you repel him, and then it goes into the scene where, uh, oh, he wasn't there to fight you. He was there to fight the ongoing threat that was throughout the end game content, and you just ended up fighting him, uh, because he was there because they thought he was there to destroy the the community. So you ended up kind of being the bad guy in the end for a little bit of it. And it's just like, well, now I, I don't, I don't want to fight him anymore, but I, his armor is very cool and I want it, but I don't want to fight him because he's a good guy. Well, kind of a good guy. He's just protecting his territory. That's it. From these little friggin' stupid bat things. Um, but yeah, it was, I'm so happy. I, I was so happy I was able to get it done. And, uh, obviously you can, you, the, the listener can tell how light of a week this is. Because I'm just talking about how I beat one monster in Monster Hunter. Yeah, yeah, that that is how light of a week it is. We're, we're yeah. letting Richie gush about a monster. But it was like the the armor looks really cool, and I want it. But one of the pieces requires his like rare I, I, armor, a rare item to get, and that's it. Takes me 20 minutes to beat him normally, and that's if I can beat him. So, and I took me 11, 12 tries to beat him the first time. So, am I going to be able to do that 10 more times to get this 3% drop item? I don't know if I want to do that. But the armor is really cool and I want it. Um, but yeah, <laughs> n- I'm, I'm now, I, I'm at a point, I'm like, I want to keep playing this game. But there's no, this is the unfortunate thing about this being the final monster is there's no, I like, when it comes to me and playing games, I'm goal oriented. I'm goal based. Like, what is my goal now? There is no goal because there's no final monster coming out. And since this game isn't, doesn't have a competitive edge to it, like, I can play it just to play it, but that's going to, that'll get dull to me pretty quickly. Like, I, I can aim for mastering out all of my rankings, but there's no reason to do that. It's just, the, all of the the uh, hunter rank, the high rank, and the master rank, and all your rankings just doesn't matter to the game. It's just a number to show how much you've played at this point. I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't know what to do. I'll probably still go back and forth into it, but I uh, right now it's it's just I'm I'm still living off of the the high of defeating Malzino because he took me that many tries. Which yeah, I I'm pretty sure when I fought uh. 
uh, what's his name, in Elden Ring. He took me more than 12 tries. He probably took me about 30. Uh, Margo, I think was his name. My first, like, major boss. He took me probably, like, 30 to 40 tries. I wasn't as excited to defeat him as I was to defeat Malzino. Well, maybe you should have been. No, I mean, that that is that is the nature of Soulsborne, which is why I just, like, this is just normal for Soulsborne to me. Like, I, he was, he, but he was also the first boss, and then every boss was just easy after that. Like, I didn't have, there were, there weren't many bosses at, after Margo that, like, gave me a major problem in Elden Ring. It was because I was going after him at such a weak level, because you're so low level. Oh, I guess that, that does make a little bit of sense. Yeah. Besides, uh, Melania, but I didn't even, I wasn't even the one that defeated Melania. Oh, did you, did you do the thing? Like, somebody came in and beat it for you? Uh, yeah, it's, um, uh, 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 let me solo her showed up. Oh, wow. Good. I didn't realize. I don't, I feel like you may have mentioned that and I, I'm just misremembering it, but. Yeah. I mean, it was on stream and like, he jumped into my chat and was like, do you, uh, do you need help? I can come help you. You want, you want some help? I'm like, uh, let me give it one or two more tries and then I'll, I'll, I'll definitely take some help. Um, and I was like, you're not let me solo her, are you? And he's like, no, 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 I'm not. And he pops on and it's let me solo her. And I'm like. Guys, we've got a master here. It still took him three tries, but he got it without nothing, me helping. And nothing with nothing but a sword and a fucking pot on this head. Yeah, yeah, he he got it three tries, but he got it. So uh, that's better than I could ever do. That's fair, but I feel I feel like the challenge now is you have to go back and beat them on their on your own. Uh, yeah, that means I'd have to go back and play through the game to get to that point. Oh, can you not just like replay bosses and stuff? Not in no. That's you kill the boss. The boss is over. I don't play those games. I do not know this. It's it's a, it's it's like pretty much any game. You kill the boss, the boss is dead. I don't know. There's plenty of games where you can like go back and do like boss rushes, and I just kind of assumed since that game is nothing but bosses that there'd be like a let me go replay them sort of option. No, as I don't think there's in any of them. I don't think there's ever been any sort of replay option for bosses without doing New Game Plus. Okay, yeah, I've I've never gotten to a boss in one, so... Except for Dark Souls 3, I got to the boss, and I, I couldn't even get to Phase 2. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, so it's just... Freaking Promoto Mazzino was such a fun fight. I loved him, and I'm excited to hear what the next Monster Hunter is going to be, which I, TGS hasn't happened yet, right? No, it happens usually September. Mm-hmm. I think that's when we're expecting them to announce the next title. For Monster Hunter. What if they just take like a five year break? That would be fine as well. Uh, like that would I wouldn't be too upset about that. But we're expecting most of us are expecting them to announce it at TGS and for it to come out most likely holiday next year. If not, the the games usually either release in January, February, or like August, September. So, but we're expecting them to. I we don't think they're going to announce it and drop it six months later. So we're expect since this one just ended. We th- we're thinking like at least a year from now because they just reached their one year anniversary of of uh uh Sunbreak coming out. Oh, was that really just a year ago? I believe so. Yeah, I feel like that was much longer ago than that. No, I was I I know it was about I I streamed my entire playthrough of Monster Hunter Rise and Sunbreak on PC, so it's it's been within the past two years. So I mean, like was, two was, years seems seems reasonable. I don't know for some reason I just feel like Sunbreak was like two years ago, not just a year ago. No, Sunbreak was last year. I don't like it. It was, la- it was last year that I got Rise. Um, but that that also shows like over the course of the so Sunbreak came out in August, and over the course of the release of Sunbreak, we did get a we did get a uh, like a quarterly or every two months, two to three months, we got updates of monsters. And then the, their quote final update, which was before Primordial Malzino, was in May. And then June 17th, I believe, was Primordial Malzino. The game, the, the one year update was like the end of June, early July. Or the one year anniversary was like July, I think. Which means they didn't have enough content to even cover a full year. I mean, this is nitpicking because it's like two weeks, but still, they didn't have enough additional content to cover a full year, whereas Monster Hunter World continued for at least a year and a half to two years with consistent quarterly updates. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if nothing else, they do release content for those games. 
Yeah, but but what I'm saying is like they the they didn't have the support for Rise as they or they didn't give the support for Rise as they did for Monster Hunter World. Monster Hunter World continued to go for at least a year and a half or more after the release of of Iceborne, I think. But like I st- I fell off of it because I didn't have people to play it with because they all went to PC once Iceborne came to PC. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, I forgot so about I, that. I have like five or six bosses I still have to fight. I did recently buy it for PC. Um, and I'm waiting to hear when, if and when we're going to get a release idea for the next one. If they're even going to announce it at any time. But they don't I'm normally pro- do PC first, right? Like it, they normally release their games on console and then comes to PC later. Right. So, uh, World was, um, PlayStation it was PlayStation 4 only at launch. Um, and then it went to, it might have been Xbox as well at launch. But I know it was at least, I know it was PlayStation, and then like six months later, it went to PC. Um, and then Iceborne count comes out about six months to a year after the PC release for PlayStation, but then it takes another six months for it to come out for PC. And then at that point, they're not releasing the title updates at the same time because they still need to work on optimizing title updates for PC. So like the PC and title up the PC and PlayStation updates are separate two different updates of oh well they're getting title update one for Iceborne we're getting title update four for Iceborne um and so yeah it just it doesn't it doesn't like they don't always track and then at one point I do remember the Iceborne and PlayStation updates were at the coming out at the same time with the same numbering but they did not try to do cross they yeah, just, it does- it does look like PlayStation and Xbox released at the same time in January of 2018. Yeah. And then yeah. the PC was August of 18. Yeah. And then, like, Rise was even worse because Rise was Switch and then PC. And then Sunbreak came out for Switch and PC at the same time. I wonder if that and means that they'll they'll start releasing them together since they did it for the, the expansion. Hold on. And then two months ago, they released Rise and Sunbreak for Xbox and PlayStation. Okay, yeah, that, that is stupid. Yeah, but they had up to title update 14 of 16 or something like that. I can't remember. Like, they had to, or not 14, like, title update 4 of 6, like, at the release of the Sunbreak, um, um, uh, co- new console release, I guess you can call it. It was, it was really dumb. It was really dumb. But they will not do crossplay. They, I'm sure it's not too hard for Capcom to be able to do crossplay, but they refuse to do crossplay. They might not be allowed to do crossplay. They do it on Street Fighter. Yeah. Oh, does Street Fighter have crossplay? Yep. For some reason, I didn't think it did. Uh, I mean, five definitely did. So I'd be shocked if six does. That's that's fair then. Yeah. No, that's just they they want people to have to buy it multiple times. Yeah. Fuck those Which guys. Sucks. W- sucks worst because game like, ever. I know a lot of people who are playing Rise fresh, but they're playing it on, I believe, Game Pass. And I'm not going to install. I'm not going to play it a third time. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not going to play it a third what time. What a fake it. fan. No, I just. I'm not. I'm not going to do that. No, I, I don't blame you. Um, you guys want to talk about Renfield? Sure. Yeah, let's go for it. So, uh, for book for this book club, we watched the 2003 Nicolas Cage film Renfield, where he mm-hmm. plays Dracula. The 2023. What did I say? I think you said 2003. Ah. Yeah, no, 2023, if, if I didn't say that correctly. Um, so, yeah, he, he plays Dracula. He plays a, I guess he's a weakened Dracula at the beginning. Um, and then uh, Nicholas Holt, who was Beast in the newer X-Men movies, plays Renfield, his, like, assistant manservant butcher. It's familiar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, familiar. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah. Um, I where, watched it last night at 10 o'clock. We watched it on, on Sunday. Yeah. Um, so, whereas Dracula feeds off of people... Renfield gets his power up from eating bugs, mm-hmm. um, which I thought was kind of funny that he carries around a little box full of bugs. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, what did you guys think of it? It was fine. It's a movie. It's perfectly in that between two and three star watchable range, but I just can't be bothered to care. But they referenced Ska. They did. And then the movie was not as good from there. And that was in the first scene of the movie. Rich, what did you think? I I enjoyed it. It was it was a lot more action than I was really expecting it to be. I thought it was going to be more leaning more towards the comedy and silly than yeah. it was on on the action. Um, 
and, and I loved like the over the top bleach gore that they had going on in this game. Oh movie. yeah, it, like every time he like ripped off a limb and just blood squirting everywhere. Yeah, um, I I just I thought it was fun. It was it was a nice just little like sit down and watch and not really care movie. Like there were a few points that like. I I wasn't paying a hundred percent. I was watching at ten o'clock at night. I, there was nothing else going on, but I just I would grab my phone and scroll through social media real quick. Like I was mm-hmm. listening, but like there wasn't really anything going on on screen, so I w- I wouldn't be paying attention to screen. But it was still like it was entertaining. It was like it's it's a popcorn film. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it, it was the best way to put it. It's not going to be the greatest film in the world. I mean, it's a Nick Cage film, so it's obviously not going to be the greatest film in the world. Hey, you shut your fucking mouth. Look, the only great, <laughs> the only film I think is the greatest film in the world, it's in a cage, is beside, you know, there's two, it's National Treasure, alright, maybe three, National Treasure, National Treasure 2, and The Rock. Those are like the three greatest Nick Cage films that are like the greatest films in the world. The rest of them are all just like, alright, bearable to sit there and watch and, 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 and take in. Like, I love Nick Cage, but he know he knows his, uh, he knows his, 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 he's a great actor. Let me, don't let me say he's a bad actor. I'm not, I was going to say he knows his worth. No, he's a great actor. It's just the films, some, a lot of the films he takes are these kind of films where it's, all right, let me just, I can watch it. And like, this is definitely a, for me, and I, I don't really do this as often when we're talking about book club, but when it comes to different movies, the way I rate a movie is whether or not I'd, I'd watch it if it were on TV. Um, and it's like, would I seek it out? Would I watch it or would I just ignore it? And this is a movie that, like, if it were on TV, I'd watch it. But I, I'd probably be looking for other things. And if there was nothing else on, I would just stick with this. If there was something else more interesting on, I would go to it. But for the most part, I would sit here and watch this movie if it came on on TV. Yeah, I, that's fair. I, like, I, 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 like, I wouldn't seek it out. But you know what? Sure. Let me laugh at it. The, my biggest complaint is just Aquafina. I don't like her. I, I mean, I have nothing, no issues with her. She was fine in the movie. I, I think my, how I feel about Aquafina is how you feel about Angelina Jolie. And it's not, like, for me, it's her voice. Her voice just annoys me to a point where, like, I'm just like, I don't really think she's that great of an actress. I don't think she's that good. Like, this is, this is more of a silly movie to where she worked more. I was not a fan of her being in, um, in Shang Chi, because like that was even though that's still like a comic book superhero movie, that was still like still leaned more on the serious side, and she is a comedic actress, and and that was actually the first time I'd ever seen her in anything. Yeah, was I, I I I uh I, she was also in uh the female Ocean's Eleven. I never saw that. I ha- I actually haven't either, but I just like I I've never really never liked her. I've always hated her voice, and it's like. She's a fine actress. I just, I, it's just one of those things. Like, act, people have actors that they don't like. My, my mom hates Tom Cruise for no reason. N- not everything. She doesn't even care about his personal life. She just does not like Tom Cruise. And it's like you're the same with Angelina Jolie and 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 stuff. So like it, it's just, just and Will one Farrell. of those. Like, I, yeah. I'd, I'd rather watch an Angelina Jolie mo- Jolie movie over a Will Ferrell movie any day. Yeah, and it's just, it's just one of those things that like, I'm just, I'm not. I just don't care. Yeah, that's um, which that's totally yeah. fine. Hey, at least this movie had Ben Schwartz. Yeah, movie had Ben Schwartz, which was great. Movie had Nick Cage, which was great. Nicholas Holt, which was great. Every all the rest of the I, and like I said, even even Aquafina, she worked with this movie because she's a comedic actress. But it's still like it's just nails on a chalkboard when I hear her talk. I I can get that. I did enjoy at the beginning with um when her and her partner were chasing Ben Schwartz down the um down the street and he's just throwing bricks of cocaine back at them yeah yeah um and like the one cop just gets hit full in the face with it yeah that, that was just very funny like i think that's what this movie had like it was it was only an hour and a half so it didn't overstay its welcome yeah um which is rare now like uh-huh. every movie seems like it's two and a half hours long for no particular reason agreed e- yeah except for the new avatar which is three and a half hours long fuck that yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's but fucking also it's Avatar, James Cameron. Yeah, not so. surprised. Um, even like I think I saw the new Indiana Jones is two hours and forty minutes. New Indiana Jones is also bombing in the box office. Yeah, because nobody wants to see that the stuff anymore. Like nobody yeah. wants to go spend thirty dollars to see a fucking movie in it's, the theaters. It yeah. was uh, I was watching I was watching Philip DeFranco here uh, his 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 newscast from yesterday, 
And like one of the stories was like, oh, people think uh, Hollywood is failing. And he was talking about how, and it's, I, I texted you guys about it this week, how um, Flash didn't even make its marketing budget back, which was only $150 million. Oh, so my. they did. I know, I, I know, but still, like, it's $150 million out of their full on budget of the movie was about $200 million to $250 million. Like, I know only is like, it's weird to say only about like a millions of dollars, but it's Hollywood. So only was pretty low. It, that's a pretty low number. No, that. that's a very high number for marketing budget. Market, isn't it marketing usually the, it, isn't it, you, isn't their budget for marketing usually the same amount of budget for how much the movie took to film? It's usually half, I think. Like, so if a movie's $200 million, it's $100 million in marketing. I thought it was always, like, you double their budget. Or, like, for the full budget, you double how much it cost. I mean, it's it's going to vary film. from, like, film to film. Like, I feel like y- your DC Marvel superhero movies are going to have a much higher budget. Um, in like Like, movie budget, which in turn, they are also going to have a much higher marketing yeah. budget than your average film does. Yeah. But, like, um, your... Your smaller movies, like your, your your dramas and stuff like that, are going to have significantly smaller marketing budgets. Mm-hmm. Even um, like um like the two, the next two big movies that people are talking about are Barbie and Oppenheimer, um because they open on the same day. And yeah. I feel like I've seen I've seen like a decent amount of Barbie marketing. I have not seen much Oppenheimer at all. I saw, I, I you haven't gone to the movies. No, but like, that. Marketing is not just trailers. I, like, I know, but you don't... Well, you know, you do have TV, I'd imagine, so you do... I'd imagine trailers are the smallest part of the marketing book, because they're so... In theater trailers, I should, because that's so a very specific niche versus TV, versus internet, versus billboards, etc. Yeah, and it's just like, I have I have seen legitimate Barbie marketing, but like... Not not a ton of of Oppenheimer stuff, other than like articles talking about how both of those movies come out on the same day. Yeah, and it's maybe just that's like, what they're feeding off of. Like we don't have to spend money on the on marketing because Barbie's got it all covered for us. Yeah, and like honestly, like I feel like those two movies are probably going to be the two this year that do the best because there is that weird word of mouth about them. Yeah. But I don't necessarily expect either of them to be billion dollar movies. Oh, mm-hmm. not even close. No, I mean well. Oppenheimer's a Nolan movie, and those, I don't know how often... I think it's a Nolan movie, right? It is, yeah. Yeah, and I don't know how often they do hit those billion-dollar thresholds. Like, I don't think... I think Inception was his last movie that, like, hit that, like, like critically acclaimed everyone went and saw it thing. No, um, P- I mean, the, sa- the, the War one, 1917, was really acclaimed. I don't know that it made the same kind of money that, like, the Batman movies did. Yeah. Um... But, like, he also, like, um, his last movie, Tenant, would have probably made a lot, um, just based on all the word of mouth going around about it, but it released during the pandemic, so it went straight to streaming. Yeah. Or at least had a very limited theatrical run. Yeah. Um, um but that's also, like, w- what I was getting at with DeFranco, like, he, he, he talked about Flash, he talked about, um, Teenage Kraken, uh, and, 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 uh, Indiana Jones is like, all of these movies aren't making money, but then you look at Into the Spider Verse, and it's this that movie killed it in the box office, killed it like they they like first two weeks or whatever they made all their money back, and it's and still some, like the number two or three movie yeah. even this past weekend. Yeah, it's it's and like Cobb, you used to be a movie goer. You used to go to movies like every week, every other week, something like that. Like you, not just Marvel. Like you guys, you and Eric went to movies all the time, and now. It's you. You admit it. It's expensive to go to the movies. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of time, and it's not worth it anymore. The, the, yeah. The, the cost of going to the movies, and that's the problem everywhere. It is you're paying ten to fifteen dollars a ticket. Mm-hmm. Plus, then like I don't get concessions because they're too expensive. But I know that's how the theaters make their money is concessions. So I'm doing nothing for the movie theater when I go see this movie. So I'm spending fifteen dollars to sit in a movie theater and have a parched mouth. For the next three hours. Whereas you guys going with your your wives and people going with their partners and whatnot, like spending thirty, forty, fifty, sixty dollars for a three hour movie that might not be good. Yep. Yeah, and it's like I am happy to spend the three hours at home watching that stuff. Yeah, because like, you can you can pause it, you can go get a drink, you can go to the bathroom without missing anything. Like 
you can order pizza midway through and it'd be there by the time it's over. Like you can yeah, figure things out. And you, you don't have, you don't have the factor of the other people that are probably going to ruin the movie unless you're going opening weekend at night. It seems to be the only time where like the crowds are excited for the movie. So they're the proper amount of disruptive. Mm-hmm. Cause like they're like, there are two different types of disruptive you can be in a movie. There's the the whole crowd is into it and they're cheering and laughing and stuff at the proper times. And then there's the people went to this movie even though they didn't want to see it and they're bored playing on their phones and talking the whole fucking time. Yeah. And I feel like if you go after the first weekend and or anytime during the day, that's all you're getting. Yeah. Um and like I'm sorry, I don't I don't want to go to a nine o'clock movie that's three hours long. Like, I don't want to be at the movies until midnight and then have to drive home. <laughs> nope. Yeah, it's it's the, like, Hollywood isn't failing. It's the, the movie atmosphere is it's what's failing Hollywood. It's Well, I mean, Hollywood is failing by not being able to tell a cohesive fucking story in under three hours. Yeah. But, but well, I mean, I don't know about it. I mean, no one asked for, like you said, no one asked for Indiana Jones. Um, But the, the other movies that I met, like, Flash... I, Flash, I, I'm 100% at this point convinced Flash failed because of Ezra Miller. I don't think so. 100% convinced. Maybe 99% convinced. Not 100%. Um, but like, the, the teen, number of teenage... people, uh, the number of people in the world who have no idea about any of that stuff far outnumbers the people that are connected to this and actually know that he's a piece of shit or they're a piece of shit. Like he's, or they, that like, they, I forget. They, Ezra yeah, Miller, they them. they, them, he, he. Yes, non binary. Okay. They then. Um yeah, that like they are a piece of shit. Um but like the majority of the world doesn't know that, but they do know that these DC movies are not good. Like for every one good DC movie, there's been four bad ones. Yeah, and that's that's the thing. From what I'm hearing, this is that one good DC movie. But that's like they've already they they've lost all of their goodwill. Nobody yeah. wants to see these movies cuz the and Flash it's... was not interesting in the Justice League. And they like the Flash was a little bit better in the Snyder cut, but that was five fucking hours long. Yeah. Like you should not have, you should not need five hours to tell a fucking cohesive film. You and, should and need that's, three hours. That's the problem with how Snyder was running his friggin' uh, his his DC EU was the fact that let's introduce every fucking major hero in one movie instead of let's introduce them all in their own movies and then bring them all together. Even Batman v Superman, that movie was bad. The extended cut that was like three hours was a better movie because more of the plot was there. Things made more sense. But yeah. like because it was three hours, it is still a bad movie. The fact that you could not tell a cohesive fucking story in a reasonable amount of time, you shouldn't be making fucking movies. That's <laughs> yeah, night. We, g- we got a more cohesive story in an hour and a half at Renfield than we did in the Snyder Cut at five hours. Exactly. Like, and yeah, like... I- I th- I think the Flash failed because like DC has not DC has no track record like their track or uh, they have a negative track record I should say because like mm-hmm. what was it the the last good movie that people seem to like genuinely enjoy would be the Suicide Squad yeah uh, and before that I think it was Wonder Woman and I don't think Suicide Squad was in theaters I think that was just straight to HBO right yeah Suicide Squad was straight to HBO yeah so you figure you had the second Wonder Woman movie Black Adam um, the Birds of Prey movie, Justice League, um, sh- people liked Shazam, but it similar to The Flash, it was one of the movies where like people were burned, and Shazam was a unknown quantity. Like nobody knew the fuck who that was. They weren't going to say it. It's not 2008. People aren't just going to take a chance on unnamed fucking characters. Mm-hmm. Not when these movies are twenty dollars to yeah. go see them. The, people are people are more willing to go check out an unnamed. Marvel hero than they are to go check out an unnamed DC hero at this moment. Because yeah. Marvel, at least, uh, even now, even though, like, the recent, uh, phase hasn't had the best reception, it still has a better track record over ten and a half years, twelve years, something like that, than, um, than DC has over their last four or five years. Yep. But, and I mean, even then, like, Marvel, Marvel's losing steam too. Like, look at, um, like Eternals, Frank, like Black Panther two made a lot of money, but Black Panther two was too long. Like it was another movie where they could not tell a cohesive story in a reasonable amount of time, so they made it ex- incredibly long, and it still couldn't tell a good cohesive story. 
I disagree. I think the story was good and cohesive. I just thought the movie was boring. I also think they uh, th- some of the storylines were unnecessary for sure. A, you saying this, the movie was boring means it wasn't a good story. If it was a good story, you would have been interested the whole time. Yeah. I, hmm, no, I maybe. I don't know. It's it's because it was long is why it was boring. They could have and the, the story was good. What they were trying to tell, the story that they were trying to tell, and the story of grief, and the story of getting over your grief and everything else, like, that was good. But it was just, it was, there was a lot of nothing in that movie. And that was where, like, there was a lot of, like, alright, the scenery is pretty and beautiful, which is nice, but there's still a lot of nothing going on, and then... The, the problem with that movie, to me, were the B and C stories. They put too much of other stuff that did nothing for it. The the, oh, the shit with the CIA and with, with, with Martin Freeman, just cut that out. Cut that out. The, 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 honestly, like, their, their inclusion of, of Riri Williams was, was nice, but, like, they kind of focused too much on stuff that they didn't need with her. The Absolutely. story itself and what they were trying to tell was good, but they just, like you said, they took too long to tell it. Look, the only movie I've seen in the last 12 months that I think I, like, thoroughly enjoyed, like, what they did with it, it's probably the fucking Mario movie. Like, I've seen other good movies that I've enjoyed, um, but, like, movies that have, I should say movies that have, like, come out in the last 12 months. Like, that Mario movie, it, it was an adaption of a thing that doesn't really have much of its own narrative. So, like, they were able to use things that people were familiar with, but actually give them some sort of, like, a background and, like, a story. Mm-hmm. And, like, they just did a really good job hitting, like, all the right moments with that versus, like, every other movie in the last year where it's, like, I I still haven't bothered to watch Ant-Man and the Wasp yet. I I think that movie is great. It, it's It holds up. It is so good. Like... I'm just, I'm not interested in watching three hours of fucking Paul Rudd being Paul Rudd. Like, I love Paul Rudd, but, like... Really? That long? Three hours is too much of anything. Any movie. I, I, I'm checking to see. Ant-Man and Wasp only two hours. Okay, yeah, you know what? It was. It was, a, it was almost exactly two hours. Yeah. Two hours I was just assuming minutes. because all of the, they've all been so long over the last, like, couple now, of years. Mar- Marvel is good at, with the exception of Black Panther, Marvel has kept it within two hours. Wasn't Guardians 3 long? I don't think so. But Guardians 3 was fantastic. So Guardians 3 was almost three hours. Really? It doesn't feel it. 150 minutes. Two hours, 29 minutes. It's two and a half hours. Too long. It doesn't feel it. Guardians doesn't feel it. I mean, that's another one. Like, I have no interest in seeing that one. I legit haven't watched a Marvel movie since Endgame. Like, it's too much. There's too much. They're too long. No Way Home was good. Shang-Chi was good. Um, Eternals was boring. And I don't think I've seen any other Marvel movies since that. You haven't seen Doctor Strange? Oh, I forgot all about Doctor. Like Doctor Strange was fine. Like I, the first one was better. Like that was another one where it just it it felt like a like an like a broken like story. Yeah. Um, I didn't dislike it, but like yeah, at this point, like I don't care about the MCU movies. Like they're not entertaining well, anymore. And, and that's that's part of the problem with the MCU is their series are so much better. And like but I even then, I, have, I haven't even started Secret Invasion yet. I and well, it's, there were there are only two episodes in at this point. I so thought it was longer. I thought it was more in than that. No, it's uh, tomorrow will be episode three. Like it just started, so that's fine that you haven't started. I started it last week on Wednesday when the second episode came out. I'm um, probably just gonna wait until the it wraps yeah, up. I like and so far like this probably it's probably started the slowest out of any of them. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say it's probably going to feel very similar to, um, Falcon and Winter Soldier. Uh, it, um, and so it might, it might not be as good as, as like some of the others. Like I loved, I've, I've loved every one of the Marvel series. My lowest they, they rated. They have been one, solid. They, they, they have been. And I'm, tr- now I'm trying to remember what they all were. So you had WandaVision, Falcon Wanda, and Winter Soldier, Hawkeye, um, Miss Marvel and She Hulk. Miss Marvel and She Hulk. Yeah, and like I, my lowest rated one, even though I loved it, would be WandaVision. Like She Hulk. My lowest rated is probably She Hulk, just because it kind of broke the fourth wall a little too much and kind of like yeah. hurt itself. 
Yeah, like that that ending that ending kind of hurt it, but besides that, the rest of the series was great. Or the rest of that season, if they're gonna get a season two, but the rest of the series was great. I I loved Captain Mar or Miss Marvel. That was an amazing series. It was funny, it was silly, it hit all the marks. Like the rest of these the rest of these, like Hawkeye was great because he like finally get get to shine a light on on a good character who doesn't really get a lot of light shined on him. Um and it was just it was very well done and, and Haley Steinfeld as 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 what's her name was fantastic. Um and then Falcon Winter Soldier is honestly I think my favorite series of them all. That it that was, one was actually really good. It was I really very that good. One. Like they're 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 and they're they're Disney Plus content and Disney's Disney Plus content in general is very good. But Disney's Marvel and Star Wars content outside of D Plus is faltering. And I think it's because, and I remember them saying this, and I'm surprised, they, they wanted to focus more on Disney+. Plus. They wanted to get the subscriptions, because they probably can make more money off of Disney+, Plus than they can off of box office releases at this point. The more people that sign up for Disney+, Plus and then don't watch it, because they're waiting for a different series to come out every six months, they're making more money on a $10 a month subscription than they are off of... A film release that people are going to pay to see once, and then fifteen dollars to see once. Yeah, yeah, that that all tracks. <laughs> um, but back to Renfield. Yeah, I was just about to say, like we we went a little off topic there. I I liked Renfield. Um, yeah, it's not kind of like like I I have a similar opinion to you. Like it's not a thing that I would necessarily seek out, but if it's just on and there's nothing else going on, it's something that I would definitely throw on just to. It's kind of like like the Fast and Furious movies. Like if there's yeah. nothing else on and I just have the TV on as like background noise, I'll I'll always put on like a Fast and Furious movie if it's there. Like doesn't yeah. matter like which one or where it's at in the movie. It's just like all right, th- this is something that I know I I can watch if I want to watch, but I can also sit here and read or like play a Switch game or something and not feel like I'm missing it. Mm-hmm. And like that that's the kind of movie I want to watch. I-, I want something where it's like it's entertaining enough that like it can keep me entertained but like i don't feel like i have to sit there and like be glued to it for hours upon hours yeah 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 um so rich i think yes. you said that you have a bunch of category ideas. i have i have a bunch of category ideas so what are your category ideas uh let's see how many do i have one technically there's two there but one two three four five six 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 category ideas all right, hang on a sec. Are are they like just in a list right now? They're in, they're in a list right now. All right, hang on. And, but some of them are like this slash that. Like when you did director producer, it was director slash producer. But y- 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 so we'll see. I I now have them. I have them numbered. I, I they they are in a list one through six. So. All right, hang on a sec. What is number one? Number one is uh time loop or time travel movies. Okay. Um, I I just I I went up and and just did a roll of six sided dice on Google. Yep. So that works. Yeah. Oh, dogs barking. Um. So it I it's actually your pick for okay for a thing. Um. I just I want to make sure. Uh, this is this movie. It does fit it within this theme. Yeah. Okay. Um. So I heard learned of this movie from a uh, quarter crew. Quarter Digital, they have a YouTube channel and they look at, they review like stunts and things like that in movies. And this is on Hulu. It is called Boss Level. It is a time loop movie where a special agent gets stuck in a time loop. Um, let's see what, it, what the description oh, doesn't, came out in 2020. That, that has somebody in it, I think. Um, well, I mean, it definitely does. It has Grillo, Frank Grillo, and Mel Gibson in it. Holy crap. Okay, that's not the movie I thought it was then. So, so Frank Grillo was, uh, Bone, not Bone, what was his name? Crossbones in, um, in Marvel. And he was one of the, it was, he was a lead character in one of the Purge movies. Yeah. What, what was the name of that again? Uh, Boss Level. Boss Level. Yeah. So the description on Google, a former Special Forces agent is trapped in a time loop and relives his death over and over again to escape the terrible situation. He must track down those responsible and stop them. So it's basically Groundhog Day, but with, with special agent fighting and hey it's only a hundred minutes yeah it's it's That's it's a, perfect and and like based on google it's get it got 6.8 73 76 like it's a, it's not a terrible movie it's a it's it's gotten decent reviews it's gotten fine reviews so um 
Plus, again, this is like the first fucking Mel Gibson movie I've seen since he went off the rails, so that, that'll that be interesting to see. Yeah, he hasn't really made many movies in a yeah. long time. At least yeah, not movies so, that I'm aware of. So that'll be uh that that'll be the pick. Oh, let me move this from the list um, for us, so I don't have it next time, and I'll have to try to. Rep- oh, actually, there was was that included? In- so there was actually seven, or no? Yeah, well, there was seven. Now there's six. Now there's six. <laughs> um, I'm gonna skip talking about um Evil Dead because I think my lunch just arrived. Okay. Um, <laughs> do either of you guys have anything else you want to talk about though? No. Nope. Oh, Drew. Um, actually, before we wrap up, you were you were messaging me the other day. Um, what was the the documentary thing you were talking about that like you got interviewed for? Oh, sure. So I was at a concert last night. Uh, or God, was that yesterday? Before. No, Sunday night. It's Tuesday. Day is weird. Um, it was the new, uh Bad Time Records tour. We are the Union. Cat bite. Kill Lincoln. Uh, they kickstarted a documentary that they're filming along with that tour. And uh, Drew, the hype man in Kill Lincoln, was outside interviewing people in line and recognized me from the few shows that I've been to to see them and basically did not give me an option to not be interviewed. I mean, I could have nice. said no, but as he was like walking down the line going, anyone want to answer questions about Ska? And then sees me and just comes over and just like hands me the little disclaimer paper to read before asking questions. Nice. And so, did you answer any questions of, like, I'm not really sure what Scott is? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I answered the questions. Uh, the documentary is called This is New Tone. Uh, I don't know if it has a release date or not. I'll, it was on Kickstarter. I know it got funded and all. But uh, yeah, and then they were filming the show as well last night. so Or Sunday night. That'll be out, I believe, later this year. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Look, nice. go, go, going to too many shows pays off. Yeah. I'm not sure how, but it does. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think with that, we will wrap up for this week so that I can go have lunch. Because yeah, we're, we recorded much earlier than we usually do. Um, yep. Yeah, like a day before. It was like 36 hours earlier than normal. But in two weeks, we'll be watching Boss Level. Um, and other than that, you can find more of our content over at www.one-quest.com. You can also help us out by supporting us at patreon.com slash onequest. If you can't support us there with your dollars, though, you can go to your favorite podcast platform, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, rate us, review us, subscribe to us. It all helps a bunch. You can also find us on social media, facebook.com slash onequest online or at one underscore quest on Instagram and Twitter. Our YouTube channel is youtube.com slash onequestvideo, and you can always send us an email to social at one-quest.com. Uh, and Rich, what does your streaming look like? Uh, check me out on YouTube, youtube.com slash at bwalnuts, um, where uh, I've got uh, shows that come out, or Let's Plays that come out Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, and streams Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and most Sundays as long as I'm feeling up for it. Uh, just check me out. We'll be playing a lot of Final Fantasy 16, Sea of Thieves, and um, probably that's about it until I beat 16 and figure out what else I want to play next until Remnant 2 comes out. Nice. Um, and with that, we will be back next week with something else to talk about. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. See you.